All right, today we're going to talk about grass mats. And uh, what we have here is broom sedge. And as you can see, this is a dead, kind of beautiful brown, golden color. Um, it's not ideal for grass mats, actually, but it's what we have an abundance of. So it's what we tend to use here in the Piedmont of North Carolina, unless we happen to come across some really good alternative. But uh, every time I've done it here, it's been broom sedge, because that's what I'm around. So first of all, um, let me show you how to gather it. The way I gather it is I find the biggest bunch I can. You know, this isn't necessarily the biggest bunch I can. I just grabbed uh, a bunch. And uh, it tends to gr grow in bunches like this. So I'll take a handful and I'll just push down on it. And that'll break the stalk so it gets pretty easy to gather. Um, and I'll gather a whole lot because you're going to want a lot to make a grass mat. So, you know, get a whole big bundle. Um, some people like to use a bandana. They protect their hands a little bit more because sometimes you can get poked. I've been doing this long enough that uh, I'm not too worried about it. I guess I just have maybe more of a, a technique than I even realize because I, I know not to poke myself and I can't tell you how. Um, but yeah, I'll gather a few more handfuls just to give you the idea. I come in here in the middle of all of this beautiful broom sedge. And that's one of the fun things about this project is coming outside around all this beautiful broom sedge and just kind of losing yourself, you know, seeing all these animal trails and everything. Oh, yeah. So that's a really fun project. I used to do a class called Grass Mats, and it was a nature therapy class. I didn't do it, teach it as a survival skill, even though it has a lot of survival uses. So much as just kind of a fun way to interact with nature, to make something that's easy, gets you outside, and that you can use for all kinds of fun stuff. All right, so that's how to gather it. Again, get the biggest armful you can. And Teresa's already piled up some, so I'm just adding this to the pile. I make sure the bottoms are all lined up and the tops are all going the same way. And I will grab two cords. This is just landscaping twine. I'm not at all picky about the kind of cordage I use. And I just lay them out. And I'm gonna take a bundle. Um, I usually get a bundle about as big as I can grab and wrap my hands around. So that's about the size of the bundle I use. There's no rule to that. It's just, if I use less, it's gonna be a thinner mat. Of course, if I use more, it'll be a thicker mat. And I set it down right in between the two. So I'll take this cord here, and I go a little ways from the end. I try to line these up as much as I can. And I tie it over itself. And I don't know, I guess I go about a hand and a half's length from the edge, but again, it uh, there's really no rule to that. That's just what I have learned to do. Kind of not as well, right now I'm just doing, uh, I'm not even sure what you call this. Maybe an overhand knot, but it's like the way you start tying your shoes. And tie that really tight. Now some people stop there. They just add their grass after this, so all they do is the overhand knot. I like to add a square knot to it, but remember that's not necessary. Some people go faster and just uh, do that over and over and over. So keep in mind as I show you the square knot, it is not absolutely necessary. But a square knot, I do another overhand knot, but I make sure that if you see that this is coming out from underneath the right side, it loops over and goes back underneath the left side. So there's a symmetry to a square knot. If you can see that, it goes a, a nice arc that's completed. So that's a square knot. It holds better than a double knot. I'll show you a double knot over here. Doing my overhand knot. And on this end, I just try to go in enough that I'm grabbing, you know, what I feel like is enough grass material. Now a, let's see, a double knot. Looks like this. So if you can see, it's coming out from this side, but then going underneath the other one. It doesn't have the same symmetry. 
And you can look at other videos and other uh, pictures to, to practice the square knot. Um, a double knot is probably stronger than just the overhand knot, which would work. Uh, but a square knot is the strongest that I know of, so I use the square knot. And you put the bundle, the first bundle, right about in the middle of the landscaping twine because you're going to use the landscaping twine like the most amount that you can before you have to splice in another piece. Yeah. And that's not, again, that's not nearly a, really a rule either because as you go, you're going to have to tie in, and I use another square knot to tie in more cordage. Mm -hmm. um, so if I start with a short piece up here, it just means I have to tie in another piece sooner. It's really six of one and half a dozen of the other. Grab another grass bundle. Again, roughly what I can gather in one hand. And try to line it up as much as I can. I don't worry too much if it's a little bit crooked. Just, you know, what I can manage. And then I put the bottom on the other side. So if that's about that length, I try to roughly match it to line it up. Do my overhand knot. And once again, that could be it. I could just add my next grass bundle if I wanted to, but I like square knots, so I do this extra step. It secures it in place more. And come over here, grab this, overhand knot, it's coming from underneath on the right, so I put it where it's going underneath on the left, it's got that symmetry, it's a square knot. And every time I do that, I throw one over here, put one there because that way I can lay my next grass bundle right there and then wrap over it. So that's how you start it. And the next grass bundle is going to have the bottom part over on this side. So you yeah. alternate. You keep alternating. So here's the bottom of that last bundle. The next one to have the bottom over here. So let's go to this other grass mat. This one's a little further along. So you can start to see this shaping up. And again, here's the bottom. So I put the bottom over here. And after a while, you can start seeing where the bottoms are. So I just start lining up the bottom basically with the, the last time I, I had one on this side. And that's so your mat doesn't get all wonky and like start going to the side like crooked. Yeah, it makes it more symmetrical. If you had all the bottoms on the same side, it would start kind of forming like an arc, a fan shape. Hmm. This keeps it more straight. And there might be a use for having that fan shape. I've never uh, come across a use for that, but doesn't mean there isn't one. <laughs> Maybe if you're surrounding a fire ring. <laughs> Possibly. And uh, I tighten it, and sometimes I kind of hold it with my thumb a little bit, because depending on what cordage you use, it might want to loosen a little bit while you're getting that other knot in there. Do that. Come over here, square knot, and you can trim these. I, uh, if I'm keeping one for a long time, especially if I'm going to use it like, a, I don't know, for a specific purpose, like a rug or something, I will often trim, like line up the ends with the bottoms, so it'll look much neater. Hmm. For this, we're going to use it in our little primitive shelter we're building, and uh, I'm kind of wanting the extra fluffiness, so. I'm just going to keep that on there. I could make this wider. So for instance, I could take a bundle of grass and put another bundle here. So here's the end, the top. I'm putting the bottom and overlapping and just add a third row. So you can make this as wide as you want, depending on how you do it. Um, typically, I just make these long. And um, let me show you one that we're calling done for now. I roll these up. Oh, yeah. So this one's about the size we want this one. I've made longer ones, but we don't need that long of a one for right now. And man, if you're just sitting on the ground and you don't want to be on the wet ground, you want to be insulated from bare ground, oh, it's so insulating, it's so uh, 
feels so cozy and warm. We were in our shelter um, yesterday and we're still trying to insulate it and get it warm and the ground was cold and as soon as we rolled out this grass mat like our butts were warm it was really nice you can do all kinds of things with it like you know make a little sleeping pad for my butts on that and I've got a little bit of a pillow and of course if I had a longer grass mat I'd have more of a pillow if I wanted it and um, what we did in this one class so I was showing people how to make these because I kind of made a little Zafu and Zabuton if you, if you ever do like a Buddhist meditation. You can roll this up and it elevates your butt and just kind of tuck your legs in under there. And it's such a comfortable way to sit up straight and just uh, do a sit spot, meditate if you're into that. Um, but yeah, there's so many uses for this. I can use it for a door for a shelter. Um, I could use it for the inside of the walls to, to help insulate the shelter. Um, bedding, if we make some kind of like use vines to make a hammock or something, you plop a grass mat on that, that's comfy. And if you make a few, even better, you know, even softer. But anything you want to say about grass mats? Uh, maybe another time you could show how to make that chair thing with like a tripod where hmm. you use the grass mat. Maybe, yeah, I'll just kind of plug that right now. If you know how to make a little tripod, like a wooden tripod, you can start fooling around with that. And uh, you could have something to sit on and this top part tied up and leaning on that tripod. And that's a nice sturdy seat that you could have. So yeah, once grass mats are just one of those skills that I find um, really translatable and useful. And uh, you know, if I don't know what else to do in a survival situation, like, you know, I'm just looking for something that'll be productive. Grass mats. I will find a use for grass mats. So, hope you go out and make one and uh, enjoy.